Hello and welcome to this short service of worship for Sunday the 31st of May. Today is Pentecost, the day when the church celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit, a day full of joy and hope. Today also marks the first Sunday of the first phase of coming out of lockdown for us here in Scotland and it is the 11th Sunday when we've not been able to gather together in our church buildings. Today of all days we remember that the Holy Spirit binds us together wherever we are and however we are worshipping. So the call to worship today is the reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like the tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Come Holy Spirit, speak to us with words which we understand, warm our hearts, set our souls on fire. Come Holy Breath of God. Blow away our cobwebs, rattle our safe places, and send us out in Jesus' name. Amen. Pentecost, as I said, is a day of celebration, so I've been digging in my box to find some of the things that we use to, to, to help us to celebrate. When we have a party, we might have um, we might put on a, a hat, a party hat. I've got a few of these. Um, I've got some paper cups to help us. Um, to have a, a, a wee drink of some juice, a drink of just fizzy juice, and I've got um, some balloons um, to help us to celebrate as well. It makes it feel a bit like a party because that's what Pentecost should be. It's a it's a, a time to have fun and enjoy ourselves, and we can do that in our own homes if we've and if you've got some of these things, you can use them, and that would be great. If not, you can make your own. Um, balloons are particularly good because they help us to think about the Holy Spirit. When we blow up a balloon, I'm going to do that now. We fill the balloon with air, with, with our breath, which comes from our lungs and goes into the balloon. And our breath is, breath is one way of thinking of the Holy Spirit, that the breath of God, the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. God breathes on us and fills us with life. If you've got balloons that are red or orange or even yellow, these can also help us to think about the, the flames that came upon the, the disciples on that first Pentecost. Um, I have only got pink and blue and green ones because I've used all my red ones and yellow and orange ones already. I'm going to let this go. Oh, look, and when you do that, it's dynamic, isn't it? The Holy Spirit makes things happen. It moves. It's not static. The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1 to 13, where we hear the words of Paul. Let's listen for God's word. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or, or other, you were influenced and led astray to dumb idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between Spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you have ever been on holiday somewhere where you didn't speak the language, when the signpost didn't make any sense, when you couldn't read the menu. I wonder how that made you feel. As, as speakers of English as the first language, we are incredibly privileged because usually somewhere there will be a translation of what we need to know wherever we are in the world, but that doesn't always happen. And if you've ever been in the situation where you don't understand something, you have some beginnings of understanding what it must be like to not know the language, to feel on the outside because of that. Language has a way of either including people or excluding them, and that's even when the language is our own language. But not so on the day of Pentecost, because on that day when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, upon the women who had followed and supported him, upon other believers, the Holy Spirit compelled them out into the streets, speaking languages which they had never learned, languages which they did not understand, but somebody in the crowd heard them speaking that language and understood what was being said, so that everybody who had gathered in Jerusalem that day was included in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit does that. Part of the work of the Holy Spirit is to unite people together, which is why Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians. They were not a, a united people. They were a divided people. They had split themselves up into groups according to who they followed, which preacher they liked best. They had also um, a great sense of where they were in the social class system. Some of them were rich, some of them were poor, some were slaves, some were masters. And all of that was incredibly important to them. And Paul is saying to them um, in this passage that none of that is important. It doesn't matter if you're a Jewish Christian or a Gentile Christian, and that was one of the big divides of the day. When you are in Christ, then you are one. You are one body, he says, with many parts, but one body. I wonder, too, if the church in Corinth argued about who had the best of the spiritual gifts, because Paul addresses that here as well. In chapter one of the letter, Paul had already said to them that as a church, they are lacking in no spiritual gift. They have everything going for them. Spiritual gifts are given to every believer as part of the church. Spiritual gifts do not belong only to the leaders of the church. They have nothing to do with the privilege of having been educated. They're not only for those who attend the prayer meetings or the Bible studies. No, it says to each is given gifts such as wisdom, faith, healing, prophecy, etc. In Christ, no one is left out. No one is left watching from the sidelines. We are all involved. Yes, we are all different. Yes, we all have different things we are good at. We have different issues and concerns which will stir us to action. We hear different callings. We find different ways of serving and we each receive different spiritual gifts. None of these is any more or less important than the other. But we all do it from one time at one time or another, don't we? I sometimes wish that I was as good a preacher as, as so-and-so or that I was as good at being organised as this one or as creative as that one. It's good to be reminded then that each, is, each gift is given to us by God, activated within us by God. We don't get to choose our gift. And 
these gifts may also be very different from our natural abilities. Which is why in the church sometimes, not always, but sometimes we have the person who is a bookkeeper in their daily life, maybe an accountant. They are the ones in the church who are teaching and inspiring the children. Whereas the person who is the childminder during the day in their day job is the one who spends the evenings poring over the, the church accounts. The church is a place where a person who is a joiner by trade can become the, the preacher. Whereas the person who is good at public speaking is the one who makes the crib for the nativity play. And that's the way that it should be because this these spiritual gifts are not about our natural talent. They're about much more than that. They're about, uh, they're about having a servant heart, a desire to see God working in the lives of others. Spiritual gifts are about what brings us joy as well as we serve the Lord by using them. And as Paul says in this passage, each and every spiritual gift is used is to be used for the common good. The church only functions beyond being a social club when every member uses their gifts, their acts of service, their skills, their calling, their activities, where they are needed and as God prompts them to use them. God blesses us with spiritual gifts. God blesses through the church as we use our spiritual gifts. God is able to unite us together despite our many differences. God is able to help us to appreciate one another. God is generous beyond measure in his giving of gifts and he gave us the greatest gift of all, his son, Jesus Christ, who gave up his life for us. God sends the Holy Spirit as this eternal gift for us so that God is always with us. God sends the Holy Spirit upon each of us, upon you. God bless you as you find and use your spiritual gift for the building of God's kingdom. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, on this day of Pentecost, we rejoice that you come to us now, teaching us, leading us, changing us by your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts poured out upon us, for our spiritual gifts that you have given us. And we ask that you would show us how to use them for the common good. We pray your blessing upon our world. Especially we pray for those places where there is injustice and hatred, unrest and violence, hunger and poverty illness and death. We confess our own biases and prejudices, our own inherent racism. We confess our need to be able to see that all people are equal. Teach us what we can do, how we can live, what we can say and how this makes a difference. We pray your blessing upon those we love and care for, and especially for those friends who don't know you, and for those who have turned away, and for those whom the church has rejected. We confess our own poor witness, our spirit of judgment, our need of forgiveness. Lead us into a place of listening, understanding, and welcome. We pray your blessing upon your church, especially as we seek a way forward in these times of change. We confess our desire for things to stay as they are, our attachment to buildings, our fear for the future, our need of your guidance. This Pentecost, come sweep through us, Holy Spirit, give us a good clearing out and change us into the people you would have us be. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and with all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>